Miss. Hey, worship teams, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here on Training Tracks, Worship Team Training. We're so glad that you're with us today. And we got another exciting part two with Mitch Bohannon with Kaiser Capos. And it's a pleasure, Mitch, to have you on board with us today. Thanks so much. How are you? Hey, doing great. It's good to be here. Good, man. Well, we got a lot of great response from the video that we did last time. Uh, it, was, it was quite a while ago, probably like three weeks. But we had yeah. a lot of good instruction from you and a lot of fun time learning about the uh, Kaiser Capo, Kaiser Capo right here, the shortcut. Uh -huh. and, um, so really, I, I dig it. I mean, I've, I've been using it in leading worship, and it's been a quite refreshing because of all the different chords uh, and colors I can make with just using open string and the bottom two strings That's that are right. open here is what people can see. Uh, these bottom two strings that hang over. Again, if you're just joining us and this is the first time you're seeing this video and maybe you didn't see part one, part two, we talked about this shortcut capo. As you can see, it has the E string that goes through the hole, making it into almost like a drop D thing. Mm -hmm. But you play it in the key of a D formation that gives you an E key sound. So it's almost an E drop D or, or like a drop E kind of sound, if you will. Uh, right. but it's got a, a lot of great colors. So, again, Mitch, thanks for joining us today. Can you Absolutely. give us a, a, a recap of what we did last just for a minute, and then we'll move on to our next step? Absolutely. I, I was just up in Marshall, Texas last night, uh, taught a class at ETBU to some of the uh, guitar students there. We just covered that, and one of the things that, that the teacher uh, of the class kind of pointed out to them is that, it's not just a, a simple form of playing, but opens up a new realm because of the way that the, the chords become inverted with um, this alternate tuning that it creates. We kind of touched on that last week as well. Mm -hmm. But just to um, recap the chord shapes, they come from the D family of chords. So if you were to play a D and an A and a G, in front of that shortcut capo and not finger the one and two strings, you'd end up with a one finger chord, a two finger chord, and a two finger chord. And that's your basic E, B, and A. Uh, there's two different ways to teach this. We talk in the chord shapes, but I call them by, by the, the chords that they sound. So that, um, that's my philosophy, so that I'm not transcribing the very first time I pull out a chart. Sure. I think, if I'm thinking D-shaped chords, but I'm reading an E chart, I'm singing an E, and so I just call them by the E chords. And okay. then, the, so we can play in two, when you create an alternate tuning, you can you lock yourself into what you tune to. And so we are locked into playing in E, or playing in A. Okay. There's two keys that we can play in. So our, right. our E family is that E, B, A, we have an F sharp minor, we talked about last week. Right, that was a tough one. And then the C sharp minor is a standard triad that most folks are already playing anyway. Right. If we play the A family of chords, we're using the A that we've already learned, the F sharp minor that we've already learned, the E that we've already learned, and then we add one more chord and it feels like a C shape, and that's our D chord. That's it. And so in that, I'm, that's one of the chords that I'm fingering that second string. Right, okay, got it. So I made that mistake the first time. Right, well, yeah, if you leave it open, you end up with a, a D major 7. Right, which I like that too. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. cool, but it doesn't really fit in some straight-up sure. tunes that we're playing. Sure. So where we kind of left off last week, we were talking about trans... So I thought somebody was walking through my yard. This is my son coming in. Um... We're talking about transposing, and this moves, remember, we're locked into E and A. And what that reminds me of is when we learned bar chords for the first time. We learned an E-shaped bar chord mm -hmm. where we could play all those different chords. We right. learned an A-shaped bar chord where we could play all those different chords, and then I remember learning that up the neck. So I know if I'm on five, that's an A or that's a D. If I'm on six, that's a B-flat or that's a... D, uh, e flat, and so the same way we can think about bar chords, we can move a full capo 
into position. So if that bar cord was on three, where I got a full capo, put that shortcut two in front. We're playing that E shaped bar chord, that's a G chord. And so now my E has become a G. And so now it's not just the chord of G, but the key of G. So I can play all those chord shapes, and now I'm playing in the key of G or okay. the key of C. I kind of buzz through that quick, but it's once we apply it, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Right, right. Got it. Okay, cool. Uh, take us through a tune. What do you got? Yeah, let's let's look at. It. I was just listening to a, a song this morning, so it's kind of buzzing in my head. Uh, the old hymn, "Nothing But the Blood," kind of the way I play it with the shortcut. Blood can wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood Jesus. Cut, you know, you can create some create some feel that's just really slappy and simple, right? But is a good groove that mm -hmm. kind of draws in your. We I play to lead people to sing, mm -hmm. and so that when you grab them with a with a groove, they participate. I believe a lot more. Uh, well, yeah, you can play that melody line like you know. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Want to play together? Yeah. yeah, sure. Two, three, four. Just to play like an extra melody on top. Yeah. Almost like a mandolin sound. The B section. Ready? And. You broke up. I lost, I lost right. it on that. I'm, I'm on that B section. The uh, the, uh, makes me fly. Yeah. yeah. So that was. And I've been doing that in worship. If it wasn't this song, it, I remember um, uh, it's actually last week we just did 10,000 Reasons, which, you know, I yeah. actually incorporated that last lesson that we did and mm -hmm. just played the uh, some of the melody lines and the, the, the sliding, the, you know, like that. I brought it up. Uh, you know, I just had these nice, under and overtones uh, that some of the guitar players are actually kind of they're watching me they're like wow that's uh what are you doing there that's not kind of good and I, and I was encouraging them no, just stay on the part that you're playing right. and I think that's that's important for a lot of musicians to keep in mind as you're using the shortcut that you know just like any guitar playing if you have you know more than two guitars please please don't play in the same register you know exactly. use, use exactly. a shortcut exactly. use another capo <laughs> But um, with this kind of shortcut capo, which I love so much, is that it just explores more colors of the chord. So you do have to be careful in working with another acoustic player because if you have them, the best way I, I recommend is just to let them use the open strings. There's no capo. You take the shortcut capo mm -hmm. and go ahead and explore you know, some of those uh, lines there. Uh, Absolutely. But they pop, That's, so miss things. One thing that, that I would do, uh, I had a really technical... Uh, trained musician um, that I've played with before, and I just wouldn't say what I was doing because if I would mm. say exactly the sh the shape or the inversion that I would play, right. and then they they joined in that same one, it would just be overdone. Yeah, where it wouldn't blend well. 
Right. And so, uh, you know, it's, it is creating just a, a new atmosphere, a new space in that music bucket. Right, right. Well, how about another bucket? How about we uh, transfer to the G bucket, which would be uh, the G formation chord. Yeah. Let's go to the key of A then. Okay. Uh, Take us through it. First position. Remember, that's the, if we're using G shape chords, that's G, C, down to a minor, which is the F sharp minor, and then down to the one chord, my normal chord, which is a E. Um, we talked about songs, and now I just blanked out. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Christ is an F, Hill song. Yeah, great song there you go. There you that, go. Starts on, that starts on an F sharp minor, goes to a D, to an A, to an E. Christ is my reward. Oh, my Lord. and tricks that you can do uh, yeah. through that. I, I forgot how that that chord progression turned around in that second part of the verse. But um, yeah, it just really it sounds good. I'm hearing you move around in that uh, melody line. It adds a lot. Yeah, it there's, does. There's songs, and, and you mentioned uh, 10,000 Reasons earlier when we were talking before we filmed. When you add in, remember where a G uh and a C can be suspended. That, oh, yeah, yeah. And we can come in. So. Just adding that one note right there really extends a section yeah, of, a, it does. of a verse or a chorus. Yeah, it does. It kind of reminds me of uh, Benji's song. Um, uh, actually, no. It's, it's a song that Benji led, uh, which would be the um, uh, "Your Grace Finds Me." It's got that same oh, kind of drum yeah. to it, and Benji does a lot of that in his songs too, which right. I love. But, Absolutely. Yeah. So, can you tell us why does somebody need to get the shortcut capo? Man, it's it opens up a new realm. It really does. And one thing that uh, we mentioned in the class I did last night. That is, it will help you get away from boredom or getting in a rut. A lot of times we play things the same way, the same way, the same way every time we pick up the guitar. And when I watched you pick it up for the first time and you listened, if we'll take the time to, to put it on, strum through a chord and listen to what it does to the chord, the creativity is going to come out of us. If we play one of yeah. these instruments, we are a creative. Right, and so that creativity is going to come out. And just a, a quick note: I'm watching time as well. I've given this. It's not just a beginning uh, tool. I've given this to some guitar heroes that I have in Nashville. I won't say names, but just then I get a note later. Where the, where has this been all my life? You know, I I needed exactly. something to re-inspire me, and so this really does does. I've seen it do that. Uh, to many people, what no matter what ability level they're at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Mitch, thanks again for your time and showing us and sharing with us about the shortcut capo. And again, guys, you got to get this. I mean, just a just a fabulous, fabulous tool for guitar playing for guitarists. And definitely, it got me out of the rut. I know it could do the same thing for you. So, Mitch, thanks again for being Absolutely. with us. Thank you so much, Brandon. 
Awesome, thank you. And guys, thank you too for joining us here. Worship Team Training, Training Tracks, we got some more things coming up for you. Next episode in two weeks, Stephanie Kelly, she appears on our regular Worship Team Training Hangout. We're going to go through vocal stuff. A lot of singers have been writing in to our Facebook page. And by the way, hello and thank you, all you Facebook friends and guys following us on Twitter and Instagram. We thank you so much. You can find us at Worship Team Training on Facebook. Also, Twitter, at Worship TT. Same address for Instagram. Be sure to like us, follow us, and invite us to your church. On the next episode with Stephanie Kelly, we're going to be talking about what happened to the harmony? As you notice, with a lot of worship teams, the singers either don't for, they either forget or they don't know what harmony part to sing. Stephanie's going to help walk us through all that and all your questions. And if you got questions even about today's episode, be sure to email us, Brandon at worshipteentraining.com or info at worshipteentraining.com. Also, be sure to hit us up on, again, Facebook and Twitter. So we'll see you next time, folks. Thanks so much. Be gracious in your playing. Learn a lot and bless your congregation with the gift of music and leading worship. Love you. Yeah. See you next time. Bye.